There are so many voices in this country that are speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester, Rochester Indie Media. Rochester Indie TV, here we are in our public access community television studio. And today's topic is so interesting. We're talking to people who worked on a documentary. We have filmmakers here who made a film called Shutdown. And this film was, uh, take, it took place in San Francisco right before the beginning of the war, at the beginning of the war. Was it the beginning of the war? It was the day mm -hmm. after. It was the day after the war started. And we're going to talk about how this group organized, direct action to stop the war, organized around a coalition of groups to shut down San Francisco and make an intense presence known that there is huge opposition against this war and the tactics and the strategies that were used and the successes as well as the pitfalls. And this movie was terrific. You guys came last night. We had a public screening. We had a great turnout in our community and it was great to see so much interest and enthusiasm and we had a great discussion after. It was such a highlight and thank you for being here. We have Helia and Jonathan from Oakland who are the filmmakers and community activists so we're going to get started and please tell us more about this film hell yeah well it's actually a lot of what you said it's um taking uh, a critical look at the action that happened in uh, Mar on march 20th 2003 and trying to draw some key lessons from that um time of uh, heightened activity in san francisco so mm -hmm. And uh, why now, why is it coming out now? This has been quite a work in progress. You've been working on this film for some time, and what's the significance of this time that you're, you know, putting it out? Well, one, it took us this long to finish mm -hmm. it, but also... Um, I mean, a uh, key thing is that, you know, 20,000 people came out to really shut down the city of San Francisco, the financial district. It was mm -hmm. a huge direct action protest. Um, and it's something that isn't, um, you know, well known within the U.S. that these type of actions have happened consistently um, throughout U.S. history, but more recently as well. Um, and people are preparing right now, this summer especially, to do this sort of um, large-scale mass-based direct action at um, the RNC, um, the Republican National Convention, as well as to some degree at the Democratic National Convention in order to really assert a real direct democracy in the U.S. and show that the party system doesn't really uh, um, represent us democratically. And this action in San Francisco in 2003 was really about showing that um, the Bush policies of um, attacking Iraq illegally without U.S. authorization or U.N. authorization was something that um, the majority of people in the U.S. are not in favor of, we're not in favor of, and really aren't being represented democratically. So taking that direct action was something that was really powerful at the time to shut down the financial district and really raise the social and economic costs of war. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we're um, trying to tell people about so that people understand that this is something that people in the U.S. have, have done often. And how was that organizing beforehand? So you were involved from the inception with direct action to stop the war. And how was the build-up? So many coalitions working together and groups. Can you explain how mm -hmm. that worked back at the time, in mm -hmm. 2003? I actually was not involved um, uh, at the very beginning. I um, started organizing Direct Action to Stop the War in February of 2003. And already there had been like five months of organizing before that. Um, as I understand it, uh, it came from um, 
some um, efforts through an organization <laughs> called um, Art and Revolution and Action for Local Global Justice, which was um, um, really a part of the global justice movement, anti-globalization movement, um, drawing the links between all these um, systems of oppression and injustice around the world and how it's tied to the economic system, right? So organizing against the World Trade Organization um, uh, ministerials and um, doing uh, actions against like large corporations such as Chevron, Texaco, who also are benefiting from the war. So um, there was um, an action, I think, in the fall of 2002 um, against Chevron. Um, and um, from that, uh, links were made um, to other organizations um, and individuals who were um, targeting corporations for other reasons, um, like for environmental racist practices in the city of Richmond, which is, holds the um, refinery, the Chevron refinery. And then building on those alliances to then start um, focusing on the war. Mm -hmm. There was a camp out uh, in front of the federal building, um, which I think uh, also happened in the fall of 2002. And, um, and then the momentum just grew, and people um, wanted to uh, raise the stakes a little um, and not just occupy the federal building, but really um, come out as a force in San Francisco. We're going to shut down the city. We're going to stop business as usual mm -hmm. if you're going to go through with this war. And so, that being done through direct action. Now, if we just kind of set up what is direct action and how does it maybe differ from your idea of civil disobedience and what that means. People have an idea of this tactic. Sure. Um, basically, um, two things that we talk a lot about are direct action and civil disobedience. Um, civil disobedience is really a, around breaking unjust laws. Um, so Thoreau talked about that, um, was an early person in, in this part of the country in New England, talking about resisting slavery, talking about resisting the Vietnam War at different times um, in terms of burning draft cards and that kind of thing would be an example of civil disobedience. Um, and then direct action is actually acting directly to meet needs um, of a community or a group of people without um, relying on a middleman of political representation or um, some type of government or um, economic force necessary. So Food Not Bombs would be an example of a direct action organization that's providing food um, mm -hmm. for people when there um, is extra food available and not enough people are fed. Or um, something like, you know, go back early on, you know, the Boston Tea Party of throwing the tea in the ocean to really um, show a direct opposition to the taxation policies of the British. So there's a long history of this, you know, in political movements throughout the world. But it's something that um, isn't really something that the powers that be often remember or allow us to remember in history class or, you know, talk about very often on the media because um, it is really effective in terms of subverting um, power. And we're going to talk more about it. We're going to come back. We're going to take a break. We're going to show you some clips of this film and talk about direct action. I'm Dawn, the Barefoot Host. You're watching Indie TV, RochesterIndieMedia.org. Yes! Direct action to stop the war. In early 2003, it was part of a global push against the war. Um, and it had a particular strategic framework which said the official decision making structure is going to fail on this or may well fail on it. And we're going to have a massive direct action response to fill in that void. And people were saying, well, so if we plan a big direct action, you know, around the war, or the day after the war starts, what it should look like. Maybe we could toil, you know, target oil corporations. And I was like, I want to shut down the whole city. And I think a lot of other people were having that same thought. You can see from this picture, uh, we can see that Market Street is shut down. We're saying, well, it's these corporations, this military, that are choosing to carry out this war, and we're going to disrupt their ability to function. <laughs> Well, as people who are opposed to imperialism, one of the things that we have is our ability to be disruptive. And I think it was absolutely, absolutely crucial to, it, to use that ability to its fullest extent. We really did interrupt business as usual. Buses couldn't get through, people couldn't get to work, 
And that's what we were telling people is like, don't go to work, call in sick, don't feed this war machine with your labor. Basically what's happening today is that a bunch of different uh, affinity groups are getting together to stop uh, traffic downtown. And a lot of the people, a lot of the drivers, it really seems, are pretty angry and want to go to work. But I don't think, one, they understand that most of downtown shed, a lot of people are taking, like, not working, not expected to go in. Somebody over there said, you know, maybe our streets are crowded, but think about Baghdad and think about the reality of living with the potential of U.S. bombs being dropped. You're watching Indie TV, and today we're talking to filmmakers and community organizers from Oakland, California. And it's great to have you guys. I feel like you know we are bringing a really good perspective to our community and some really interesting information and things to uh, consider. We were talking about this direct action, you know, feeling strongly that this war and these policies are wrong. That we're just going to you know, put our bodies on the line, like stop going to work, stop going to school, like stop this regular routine that we maintain every day and resist. But how, we have a pretty broad spectrum of people that are doing that and, if, you know, coming from different angles. How does that happen with such mm -hmm. the broad political spectrum? And what do you see with the various groups and tactics and how people are working together and the kind of successes of that and the challenges? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that made the uh, March 20th um, action in San Francisco a success was the model, uh, the organizing structure that was in place, which was spokes council um, and an affinity group um, uh, model of organizing. So it was possible for people um, who, you know, everybody from like community organizers without any kind of like a uh, specific political conviction who just want social justice to, um, you know, radical anarchists and communists um, organizing on their own, but then um, being able to link into this greater um, a mechanism of the Spokes Council to um, coordinate the actions. Could you just explain how the Spokes Council, just the people, what kind of organizing model is that and how does that work? Cause that sure. word, it might be a term people don't know. So an affinity group is um, like the group of people you, you feel more most comfortable organizing with, right? These are people who have your back, either your friends or your coworkers, your family, people you live with, people you trust, right? Um, and that's where a majority of the organizing takes place. So that's where you plan like um, your, uh, your action, your target, um, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and who you want to work with. You can um, uh, pair up with other affinity groups as a cluster, right, for greater action. Um, and then you have the spokes council, which is a council of spokespeople, representatives of each affinity group that can then come and talk about the greater action plan um, and, you know, what the needs are and you know by consulting with your own affinity group seeing what your capacity is and how you can fulfill those greater needs um, to then make it all make it all function mm -hmm. um, so that's how you know I can work you know uh, with my own friends and people who I share political um, you know analysis with but then I can also plug into this greater um, action with other people who might not share those same politics. Mm -hmm. We can work together without actually having to and so work closely together. San Francisco together. was shut down. In the film, mm -hmm. you see various um, sections of the city mm -hmm. and even the throughway. It looked like people mm -hmm. were like, you know, barreling mm -hmm. onto the throughway, the intersections. And what came out of that then? Businesses stopped. What do you think the message is that? you know, this conveys, and it obviously didn't stop the war, Is five years plus now, I mean, right. uh, is going on, but how it, did that make an impact, and what does, what, you know, comes out of something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think the anti-war movement um, globally made a huge impact, and San Francisco being within um, the U.S. Um, really had a huge impact in terms of not only within um, folks in the U.S. learning about these sort of tactics and these sort of ideas around spokes council organizing, directly democratic organizing, so that now we have major organizations like United for Peace and Justice really taking on these sort of shutdown actions as being the way to affect um, political change when Congress people, when um, you know corporations aren't listening, really being like, okay, well, we don't have to constantly um, petition. We can actually shut down their offices or do these sort of things. It, it, it creates a more uh, militant sort of movement. At the same time, globally, I think um, you know, these images of 
um, Americans really um, opposing their government and opposing the illegality and criminality of their leadership um, was something that really inspired a lot of people worldwide. So folks, some people in the movie talk about how um, their friends and or family members in Lebanon um, were seeing these images because in a lot of ways the international media covers the U.S. better than the U.S. media does. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll have you know an Al Jazeera reporter who's on the streets of San Francisco all day interviewing people about why they're out there and this being seen by people in Iraq, in you know Lebanon, um, and this was an early impetus to the um, to the reasons why you had a um, a real change in the dynamics around the U.S. invasion. Even so, like U.S. couldn't use Turkey to invade. They had planned for over three months the U.S. military um, and how to invade Iraq and. They weren't able to go through Turkey because of the huge opposition within the Turkish parliament didn't allow their bases to be used. And that changed the whole way in which the Iraq war went down um, on a very basic military level. So I think that that's something that um, allowed people in Iraq more breathing room to resist the policies that were going on at the same time. And, you know, I think these kind of actions really do build on a global level. We need to see them in that context. It can't be um, just whether or not, you know, we had a good day or it was a bad day for us. Mm -hmm. But the, the longer scale implications are much more complex and we need to keep that historical for, um, reference in, in mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, where's that group now? What's going on with the organizing, with Direct Action to Stop the War currently? Well, Direct Action to Stop the War we formed um, in late 2007, um, and uh, in um, March 20th of this year, March 19th, um, they had a fifth anniversary action um, and tried to kind of replicate some of what happened in 2003, um, but it's a lot smaller, and um, it just, yeah, I think they're trying to rebuild um, and um, continue to put the direct action tactics used in 2003 on the table as far as like anti-war resistance in the Bay Area and um, advertise it so that nationally it's picked up on. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know, you've gone to more meetings than I have. What do you when we come back, we're going to talk about it because oh, okay. uh, I would like to um, talk more about the upcoming conventions, the Democratic National Conven Convention and the Republican National Conventions and the direct action protests that uh, are being planned out there and how this relates to what we're talking about and the organizing styles that are coming out of that. And when we come back, we'll do that. You're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. Stay tuned. Rochester Indie TV. We're talking today with filmmakers and community activists around this great documentary, Shut Down. It was a shutdown of San Francisco for several days right after the war started, and it was very effective. What I really liked about the film, though, was the critical analysis it took of itself, that there was also some shortcomings, and, you know, it's good to reflect on that, and if everybody can't get to see the film, maybe we could just highlight what some of the challenges were with this mass mobilization of direct action, and uh, what did you see? 
Um, well, I mean, one thing that is really difficult is dealing with not only the police repression on the streets, but in some ways the thing that really stopped people um, from coming out and maintaining this type of organized opposition and maintaining a shutdown of the corporate war profiteers like Bechtel um, in San Francisco was the media and really the way in which the media spun what was going on um, to really say, oh, you're hurting the city, you're taking money away from city funds, when really you're not talking about how you're taking... The, the war is taking money away from funds ac across the country. Or, you know, saying, oh, you're hurting small businesses, not talking about the way in which the war and the policies of um, war makers are really all about, you know, making it impossible for small businesses to function. Um, so this is something where you have a media that will constantly spin um, these type of actions to say, whatever you're doing is going to be bad for everyday people. It's bad for uh, poor people. They had headlines that would say these sort of things straight up, saying, um, you know, shutting down a business is bad for um, poor people, or you know, which really doesn't um, make any sense when you start to unpack the logic of it. But it's very effective to br kind of more than anything else break people's commitment to doing this sort of action, and that was one of the huge um, difficulties that people had. And then the internal dynamics, I think, are another really important aspect to think about in terms of the lack of democracy that can happen around issues, especially of um, oppression and privilege um, in organizing spaces when you're trying to do. Um, directly democratic organizing, but you have issues of white supremacy, of patriarchy, of classism, um, that each, all of us participate in um, maintaining these sort of um, structures of oppression. And mm -hmm. so needing to really um, analyze that and see the ways in which those are used to divide us. Um, uh, and how do you challenge and explain the imagery that often gets out? I mean, going back to, you know, one of the first mass mobilizations, World Trade Organization in Seattle, and all that was we really saw in any corporate media was the little paragraph about the anarchist busted the Starbucks mm -hmm. window. And mm -hmm. that's how it's all represented, mm -hmm. like all this organizing and all this work and all the messages and values and principles behind it get put down into, you know, someone with a mask. And will you talk about how you explain to people like they're anarchists and this is what they and it's scary and they're wearing mm -hmm. this bandana and how do you make that accessible and, and you know understandable to mm -hmm. people? I think one um, strategy that was used uh, in DASW was to really um, when we had press conferences we had people who were you know community organizers or teachers or nurses everyday people who are not just like young anarchists or anarcho looking you know black bloc um, type of people um, putting out the message of the organization and, and calling other people to join them. Um, you know, it's not, we're not a fringe people. We actually have a lot of the same values most people do. And really, you know, being clear about that, maybe talking about just our values, what we stand for, what our vision is, and um, not so much about, you know, what we want to destroy, <laughs> you know, or you know, that, that's not really the focus of it. It's also like rebuilding a new society, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, let's And also doing our own media, like independent media is really, really important, mm -hmm. not just relying on them to spin, you know, use media spin to represent us the way that they want to, which is, you know, as these like violent people or mm -hmm. crazies, but using our own media to get our message across. Mm -hmm. It's when you don't, you know, I, I kind of look at it as the whole do-it-yourself, like culture and decentralizing. I don't need an expert. I don't want the hierarchy. I don't want the tier of power. We as a community can make decisions. We can support each other. You know, we can, you know, um, educate our children. We can share our resources. We can, you know, feed our people. We can take care of things that often are just lacking and, um, it's a, it's a nice structure. I mean, here in Rochester, we have so many grassroots things that are coming up. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. Food Not Bombs, we have that. We have a bike collective, people helping each other. We do have indie media here. And it's, it's more of an infrastructure of our own community of people right. that is expanding and growing so we can mm -hmm. take care of ourselves and not be reliant and expecting these, you know, powers that never do take care of us, you know, to do that. So right. it's, a, it's a great community. As you saw, you know, people are really working together now. So Mm -hmm. yay to Rochester, but let's talk about, you know, this is something that as we're organizing all this local stuff, we're also planning these conventions with unconventional action, and there's been some critique. Why are you, how does these ma this mass mobilization and direct action dovetail with this local organizing and community support, and what's the, how do you see the importance of both? Because mm -hmm. some people criticize that, like, don't go there, stay here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, in our film, I think we um, deal with that 
kind of most clearly with a metaphor of a fire um, and there being a coal burning fire and a wood burning fire and really thinking about organizing um, in terms of the kind of community based um, everyday infrastructure of food not bombs of indie media of these sort of alternative institutions that are planting the seed of the new society that we want to see um, you know in the in the current situation um, and those being the real coal burning fire the slow long term like you don't see it you don't it's not very clear but it's it's still there all the time kind of keeping the heat fire and then the wood burning fire being these kind of large actions that really spark people to get involved and get engaged and get um, really up the kind of infrastructure that we have as a movement or the interest level or the media attention that we're getting so I think a really good example of that was I mean indie media you know um, indie media is really all these sort of independent media activists that have been doing work for 10 20 30 years in local communities um, but really was sparked by the protests in Seattle and, and the WTO protests in 1999, where finally there was um, this extra spark that came from that wood-burning fire, from that large-scale shutdown action that everyone got excited about. And people said, okay, now we're going to actually create this one name and this one kind of image around Indian independent media. And so now we have this, this infrastructure that's a lot better throughout the country. And so that's a similar thing that we're looking to do. It is better. It is stronger. We have run out of time. This is like a fire that so quickly went out. We want to have more time with you guys. Thank you so much. Rochester Indie TV. Stay tuned for next time. Thank, Thank you very you much. Guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.